Welcome to the math review. This lesson is on adding decimals. So here we have three examples of decimals that we're going to add. But before we even get started on those examples, we need to make sure that we're very familiar with the rules. And there are two rules that we're going to have to follow. The first is to make sure that we use the decimal point to line up the place values. And we're going to annex zeros if needed. And when I say annex zeros, what I really mean is just to use zeros as placeholders if necessary. And then step two is we're going to start adding column by column starting from the right. So let's take a look at example one. Here we've got 57.1 plus 4.219. So the most important thing of each number is to make sure that we're looking at the decimal point. So the first thing I'm going to write is 57.1. Now we can go to our second number, which is 4.219. The first thing I like to do is write the decimal point directly under our first decimal point. I'm going to write a decimal point here. And then I'm going to put each of the numbers where they're supposed to go. So I'll put my 4 right next to the decimal point to the left underneath the 7. And the 2 is directly next to the decimal point on the right. So we've got 2 here. And then I've got 1 and 9. Since there's nothing to line it up with, I could just write it right next to the 2. Now remember, when I said annex zeros, what I meant was to use zeros as placeholders. And what that means is wherever you see a blank spot or there's no value there, you can put a zero there to hold a place value. So I'll put a zero here on top of the 1, and I'll put another zero here on top of the 9. And I'll put a plus sign here. I'll put a line under everything. And now we'll go to step two, which is to add each column starting from the right. So I'll start here on the right side, and I'll add 0 plus 9, which is 9. I've got 0 plus 1, which is 1. I've got 1 plus 2, which is 3. I'll bring down a decimal point underneath the other decimal points. I've got 7 plus 4, which is 11. But that's a two-digit number. So I'll bring the 1 down here. And then the other 1 and 11, I'll bring up top here on top of the 5. And now I've got 1 plus 5, which is 6. There's nothing else to add, so therefore we're done. Our final answer here is 61.319. Although the proper way to read that is 57 and 1 tenth plus 4 and 219 thousandths is 61 and 319 thousandths. So now let's take a look at the second example. Here we've got 21.29 plus 71.135. I'll start with my first number. I'll write 21.29. And notice how I'm making sure I'm leaving a little bit of space between each digit. That's important because honestly, the most important thing here is to make sure that all the place values are lined up. And we're using our decimal point to do so like we said in rule number one. So I've got 21.29 plus 71.135. Again, I like to start with the decimal point. So I'll put my decimal point here underneath the first number decimal point, making sure that it's lined up. Because when these decimal points are lined up, our place value should be lined up. Then I'll write one directly next to the decimal point on this side, and then seven next to that. That's 71. And the 135, I'll just write directly next to the decimal point on the right side. But when I do that, I have to make sure that all the digits are lined up. So I've got to have this 1 here under the 2, the 3 will go under the 9, and the 5 will go over here. Now, since there's nothing here on top of the 5, we can again annex a 0. So here on top of the 5, I'll put the 0 as a placeholder. And now I'll put my plus sign. I'll draw a line under everything, and then I'll start to add, like it says in step two, from the right. So I've got zero plus five is five. Nine plus three is 12, but again, that's a two digit number. So I'll bring down the two, and I'll carry the one. Now I've got one plus two is three, and three plus one is four. So I'll bring down that four. Then I'll bring down the decimal point underneath the other decimal points. I've got 1 plus 1 is 2, 
and 2 plus 7 is 9. And since there's nothing else to add, we're done. So we can read this as 21 and 29 hundredths plus 71 and 135 thousandths is equal to 92 and 425 thousandths. So now let's take a look at our final example. We've got 32.382 plus 20.994. The first thing I'll do is write our first number plus 20.994. But again, I like to stress the decimal point because I'll use that decimal point to make sure that all my place values are lined up properly. So I'll put my decimal point underneath the first decimal point here. So I'll put the decimal point there. And then I'll write the 20 to the left, making sure that each number is in its proper place value. So I've got zero here and two here. And then I've got 994. Again, making sure that everything is in its proper place value. And to make sure that's happening, you should always just make sure that you have one number on top of the other. You should never have two place values in one column. That's gonna ruin your answer. And do we have to annex any zeros here? No, because every place value is occupied by a number. So now I'll put my plus sign and then we'll underline everything. And then we can start to add, like it says in step number two, we can add each column starting from the right. So I'll start over here. What's four plus two? Well, that's six. What's nine plus eight? That's 17. But remember, 17 is a two digit number. So I'll bring down my seven and then carry the one to the next place value. I've got one plus three is four and four plus nine is 13. That's again, a two digit number. So I'll bring down the three and I'll carry the one. The next thing I'll do is I'll bring another decimal point down directly beneath the other decimal points. And then I'll just keep adding. One plus two is three and three plus two is five. And since we've got no other place values to add, we're done. And we can say the sum of 32 and 382 thousandths and 20 and 994 thousandths is 53 and 376 thousandths. Thanks for watching our video on the math review. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We might use your question in our next video. And if you found this lesson helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And it would really help if you share this and our other videos to any of your social media platforms. See you next time on The Math Review.